lovelies, welcome back. And for those who are new to my channel, I'm Cherie from Divine Visions. A big welcome to you all today for joining me. Um, thank you also for putting all your green hearts in the comments section below, which a lot of you know means that you're in the draw to win a private reading with me or to win a deck of my cards, Divine Love Messages from your Twin Flame Soulmate. Um, today we're going to be doing a reading which is all about um, hopefully getting some guidance from spirit about how to deal with our pain. A lot of us are in a lot of pain and suffering from all different types of things whether it be mental, emotional or physical pain or even spiritual pain. Going through an ascension journey is all, all sorts of things like that. Um, some of us are in a lot of heartbreak. Um, regarding our twin flame soulmate or the loss of someone around us or close to us. Um, there's so many ways that you could be in pain, guys. So um, you'll know what yours is. And um, basically what I've been guided to do today is focus on a lot of cards. I've been guided to pull out a lot of cards plus some books here to just um, go through some messages, I guess, for some comfort. And what I'm going to be doing is pulling out... Um, all different types of cards and showing you and you might be able to resonate with some more than most um, or maybe all of them um, but just take what messages reson uh, resonate with you and what doesn't. I'm not actually doing like a particular reading as like I would normally do. I haven't been guided to do that today. All I've been told by spirit is to pull out all these cards, shuffle on them and show you Okay, and some uh, messages from the book here also. And I'm just going to wing it, guys. I'm just going to um, just do whatever I'm guided to do. Okay, there might not be any particular format or structure with this reading. So bear with me. Um, so yeah, just, just um, sit back and relax and just enjoy the messages that come through. And, and maybe write down some that make sense to you. Okay, guys, and um, I will get started. Okay, guys, I'm going to have a look at the Heart Thoughts book from Louise Hay, L. Hay. Um, rest in peace, Louise. We're going to have a look at what's going on for you guys regarding a beautiful message. And I'm just going to ask Spirit to guide me to open the book to a page that's um, meant to be for you today for your message. Okay, guys, so I'm just going to close my eyes and ask Spirit to please guide me to a message that you need to hear today. Wow, look at this. Criticism. So every time you make a judgment or a criticism, you are sending something out that is going to come back to you. So I love being me. Can you imagine how wonderful it would be if you could live your life without ever being criticized by anyone? Wouldn't it be wonderful to feel totally at ease, totally comfortable? You would get up in the morning and you would know you were going to have a wonderful day because everybody would love you and nobody would criticize you or put you down. You would just feel great. You know what? You can give this to yourself. You can make the experience of living with you the most wonderful experience imaginable. You can wake up in the morning so thrilled to find yourself and feel the joy of spending another day with you. I think the um, sometimes we're, we are our own worst enemies and we often criticize ourselves and don't even notice. Every day we're saying something in our thoughts you know we might make a mistake and, and say us to ourselves oh how stupid of that that you were doing that you know how stupid of you um, or you can never do anything right like we constantly say things to ourselves that um, we don't even realize we're doing and yet when someone else does it whoa <laughs> it's like right there like a red signal you know alarm bells going off if someone else criticizes us and I think what this message is saying that um you need to learn to use positive words and when you can, uh, when you do find yourself criticizing yourself or others just to catch yourself in that moment and why and ask yourself why are you feeling that way about yourself is it really true where's it coming from might have been coming from what you were told when you were a child um, and really also criticism you know people's thoughts are just thoughts a thought cannot hurt you um, but it's interesting in saying that because when we look at, um, Masaru Emoto, I think his name is the, the person that, um, he's a scientist who was looking at, uh, 
what is it, the crystallized water or something, and, and our intentions and our spoken words quite powerful. So it's interesting in saying that a thought is just a thought, it can't harm you, but I think it can't harm you if you, if you don't let it harm you. So if you have your own psychic protection, if you own, have your own, um, you know, your own, kind of like your own armor, your spiritual armor, filling yourself up with that light um, and positivity and raising your vibration and when you do find yourself thinking or speaking negatively about yourself or others, just trying to catch yourself in that and, try, and working out why you're doing that. Um, and we all do it. I do it. We do it on a daily basis, guys. We all make a judgment. We all make. We all criticize something that someone's doing because it's not up to our um, standard or liking. And everybody's different, as we know. But this is just. I feel really strongly. It's not just about other people, but uh, what you're thinking about others. It's really coming back to you. What you're thinking about yourself. And they do say sometimes that what we give out you know to others and how we think about them is a reflection of what's going on within us so just being aware that maybe the way you that the way that we do criticize others is a reflection of what pain we're undergoing in ourselves so that's just a, a food for thought okay so i'm being drawn to different things today i'm just going to put this book down here first i'll do that one last i think so let's have a look at what some of us could be dealing with right now. Spirit, please, can you show us what what areas of our pain do we need healing with? What do we need healing? What can you show us around our healing journey right now, please? I'm going to pull out three cards because there's so many people watching. They might all resonate. One might resonate. Take whatever does or what doesn't. None of them might resonate. Just whatever cards I'm taking out today. Yeah. Well, there it is. That's one. So we've got having faith. Okay, having faith. Have faith. The second one, please. The next card, please, spirit. There it is. So we've also got sadness. And the third card, please, spirit. Whoa, okay, there it is. And we've got help from above, guys. Did you see how that came out like that? That was amazing. I could feel the energy, actually. That's why I went, whoa, like it's full-on energy. And I'm thinking that they really want someone to know that, that there is help above. And, you know, I, I kind of like, as you know in my readings, I tend to read the whole thing as a storyline. Some of you might take each, um, you might only take this as your message. But for some reason, I'm seeing that this is the theme of pain and suffering and sadness today. And it does look to me like your guides are telling you to have faith that through your sadness there is going to be help from above. The emotional turbulence that you're feeling right now um, is just a stage, it's a phase. Um, don't lose hope that help is coming for you, that soon everything will be illuminated for you, okay? All the stuff that's in your subconscious right now, right now is um, rising to the surface, for a reason and what that means is that it's it's painful to have to feel those things and confront those things we'd rather push it down but um, what's happening is this is an opportunity for you this is a blessing for you to be able to go through the process of healing to be able to release it for your highest good um, and to be able to learn the lessons that have come from that karmic cycle also. Having faith that, you know, whatever your faith is, it could be Christianity, it could be any kind of religion, it could be no religion, it might just be that you believe in a higher power, uh, you might be very spiritual. Some of you might not even be spiritual or religious, you might just like really trust in your own higher self. Help from above is a higher self also. Um, so whatever it is that you can connect with that's outside of yourself, your 3D self, um, that is of a benevolent, higher vibrating um, power, okay, can come through and help you. There are many spirit guides and ancestors coming through as well, our ancestors who want to come in and show us the way. They know that and they see us that we're suffering here on the earth plane. The earth is suffering. We are suffering, the earth is suffering. Everyone is bloody suffering. 
um, and they're coming in, but you have to give them permission to come in. Only when, um, I believe that when there's divine intervention that comes in, it's usually from your own soul contract anyway, before we come here and, and incarnate on this planet, we, um, we make a contract with those in, in the spirit world to come in and help us and rescue us in some way too, to give us the guiding light, to give us the signs that we need, um, the, the markers on the way to guide us and so we can navigate out of this stuff that we get caught up in sometimes. Some of you have been feeling very suicidal. You don't want to be here anymore. I've been there, guys. I've been there many times in my, in my life. Um, and I'm surprised I'm still here sometimes, you know. And um, it's at those times where it's amazing the help that does come through. Either that uh, spirit ascending people in the physical to you, um, but there's help on the way. Never give up hope that there is always help there. Um, sometimes we have to hit rock bottom to be able to get back up on our feet again and be strong, be strong and rise up. Okay. Rise like that Phoenix. We have the number 22, which is the master number, which is the builder. It's about rebuilding your faith. We have the sadness, which is the hierophant, which is all about lessons. And we have the 27, which is the 8, 9, which is the solitary number, but it's a humanitarian number also. So you've got help coming from above that's going to help you to help others in your time of being alone. You're not really alone. You're with yourself. And that is your highest lesson. And that's what my spirit guide, Red Feather, who's a Native American, told me. Um, that one day I was just... Oh God, I was so beside myself, suicidal, I was on my own and just cursing everything, cursing life, cursing my journey. And he said to me, um, now I've got a video of it somewhere that I did, solitude is really an illusion, you're not really on your, you're not really alone, you're with yourself and it must be your higher self and that's your greatest lesson. So let's have a look. Wow. So the saint of true freedom. Look at this. Love is what sets me free. I am married to my own soul. Oh my God. What was I saying about you're not alone. You are with yourself. You are with your soul, your higher self. And I know it sounds weird to say that there's like a duality going on there, like me and my soul. Um, but when you think about it, your soul has reincarnated many times. You haven't always been in the body that you're in or had the name that you're using right now or looked like you do now. You have a soul that can transcend all of this pain and sorrow and receive true freedom once you actually realize that as well, that we aren't permanent here. We, we have like we are spiritual beings having a human experience and everything that we do learn we can eventually let go you know we can the the pain and everything that we take on board and and have that burden with we can just release it and let it go but hold on to the beautiful lessons which then turn into wisdom see how there's a beautiful light on her heart chakra here and she's wearing this i don't really know what that is but reminds me of like the third eye and i feel like she's come into her wisdom she's allowed her heart to open and be free and I think in Buddhism, they speak about the mind being free, but it's also what they call the heart. So the mind is the heart and it's about being free. So the Empress of Protection, I am safe and divinely protected. I am held in love at all times. These could be affirmations that you can write down or take with you. So, okay, let's have a look at what else spirit might be helping with you, you, you with right now, or what message do you need, perhaps today. Balance, you might need to seek balance in your life right now. It feels like spirit are trying to help you balance between the physical and the uh, spiritual right now, and how you're giving and receiving love, okay? We've also got decisions. Spirit are helping you to make the right decisions by what do you do? Following your heart. Sometimes our mind 
uh, we get caught up in, you know, it's interesting, we've got t three different figures here and this person's got the light ahead of them, the pathway, and someone's offering them all the stars and everything of, must represent kind of like your wishes coming true or all the abundance and, and a basket of goodies, right? And then someone else is trying to pull them into another direction, but they're just looking ahead and, and following where their calling is and following their heart. And look at it says higher self. So your higher self is going to, excuse me, your higher self is going to help make the decisions, okay, to help guide you the way by listening to your heart, finding balance in yourself. Here we have a new life, divine mother. This is the rebirth experience, guys. So once we crash and burn, basically, and we have to put, uh, you know, hit rock bottom and then pick ourselves back up, it's like that rebirth we go through, like shedding the old skin, allowing those past, that past um, karmic baggage, karmic cycles to, we untie ourselves, we cut the ties, we dissolve it, we dissolve that pain away through trust and faith, through accepting the sadness for what it is, not pushing it down or resisting it, but accepting it there doesn't mean you have to put up with it forever but accepting it for what it is and acknowledging that there is help from above if you want it to help you they, they are there to help you they are giving you signs they're helping you to step into a new life and to make the right decisions through balance right here so what are they helping you to surrender well, what is it that you need to no what are they helping you to surrender right now when I say they, I'm talking about the higher guides. Surrender the idea you can fix someone. It's time for a relationship to shift. It doesn't work to try to fix someone. Each person must be accountable for his or her own healing. So it's about taking your energy back, taking your power back and grounding your energy also. See how she's all in green? It's that healing energy. I think that um, it's time that you were healing yourself. Sometimes we try to rescue someone else because really, in actuality, we really need that help ourselves. We need to be freed. Uh, we need to be healed. And so it's not to say that you can't help others, but the first thing you need to do is help yourself. So surrender worry. Make a commitment not to lead an anxiety-driven life. When worries arise, breathe them out of your body. Focus on the power of your heart and have faith that spirit is guiding you always. So, so many of you and me included have a lot of anxiety in our life. You know, there's so many things that are changing all the time. We don't know what's coming next. Surrender defensiveness. So defensiveness is a sign of weakness. To communicate in a more empowered way, stay centered and hear someone out, then offer a clear non-defensive response. When we're in pain, we tend to, um, what do we do? We put armor on, don't we? We, we do self-protect, but sometimes we can protect ourselves so much that we won't let anybody come in and we're on guard and defensive. So it's just being really um, aware of those things as well. And that might fall in line with the message of criticism too um you know that was there before so what is something that we could really focus on within ourselves right now as a positive word that we can really focus on today that we could maybe strive to move into the energy of Hard working, so being disciplined at this healing, being disciplined and mastering something in your life that's positive for you, being kind, doing something like a random act of kindness is just a beautiful thing to do for others and for your own soul. It extends that generosity and compassion out to others which also heals ourselves and learning. So it's very important that you keep learning about yourself and your journey. Don't ever give up on that. What else have we got? Talking about the journey, looking at my divine journey tarot that I created. Let's have a look at what other message could come through in this. Well, there it is. 
four of insights it's time for contemplation right now so a time for relaxation and mental rest inward reflection and grounding creating space within for new opportunities when ready so it's really about a time to just heal okay guys time to take a step back and meditate really look within infatuation adoration addiction compulsion so there's something that might be distracting you that you might be subconsciously um, going out there and seeking something that's really taking your attention so you don't have to focus on this okay just being aware and sometimes what we're infatuated with is an illusion it's what looks great you know on the outside so Freya, phases and cycles, there is a beginning within every ending. Illusions are revealed and released. Did I just say illusion? <laughs> I think I did. Okay, so recognizing that everything has its own cycle. There's always an ending and a beginning. Um... So yeah, really looking at the patterns, um, your own patterns within yourself. Where have they come from? We all have them. We all have a pattern that we go through and it could be a cycle that we go through in relationships or in our own healing. Um, you will probably recognize it could be a certain mood that you're in um, at certain times. It could be that you're, re you're repeating patterns in relationships or going or attracting attracting right the same person over and over again but in a different body in a different life you know so it could be that you might be in and out of different relationships um but it always ends in the same kind of pattern so you might be attracting the same kinds of people who are abusive um or who put you down or who lie to you and deceive you and i have been down this road guys and I swear to God, I swear to God, it's my life purpose to really get to the truth of the matter with people. And maybe that's why a lot of the times I have gone for people who have deceived me. Because at the end of the day, it's also a self-worth issue, right? We've all been there in some way. But as soon as we step up and realize that we deserve better and love ourselves for who we truly are, our mind, body and spirit, okay, not through the eyes of anyone else, but through our own eyes or through through the eyes of the higher powers, okay, because they love us and unconditionally, but to be able to see ourselves even as that inner child or from the higher self perspective, it's being able to look at ourselves as um, innocence. You know, we really are innocent on the journey. And a lot of us are... Um, subconsciously sabotaging what's good for us in life because we don't think we deserve the good and we test people and situations constantly to have them validate that we are worthy and um, at the end of the day that doesn't work it just backfires anyway so what it is about is being able to see from a higher perspective as to what patterns you do continue in your way of thinking in your way of being in your way of doing and applying these things and how you apply these things into your relationships it could be your with your family it could be a boyfriend or girlfriend or spouse or partner twin flame soulmate whatever it is karmics even um, there's patterns that you've learned along the way and you've learned them from your tr uh, childhood trauma uh, your ancestors it's generational, it's cellular, it's on a cellular level, um, a lot of the pain that we carry through and trauma that we're not even aware of, guys. And a lot of, the, a lot of it we can be aware of from our childhood that we do repeat patterns of our parents or grandparents. And, uh, and, and a lot of it is subconscious, it's in the cellular kind of thing here, generational healing is really needed here. Um, but it can be healed and it can be, you can cut away from that. You can transition through that once you're acknowledging it, once you're aware of it and you can see the patterns, 
then you can break those cycles guys that we see up there the cycles over here we can break the cycles so for instance if there's been violence in your family and it's gone you know way back and you're finding yourself acting out in similar ways it might not be the exact way um, but it could be very similar and there's very uh, pent up angry energy or, or frustration that's just not being expressed in you then it can obviously affect like a domino effect your children and then their children and this is how it all works so it's about being able to be aware of what is what are you um, what's what's being pointed out to you in life right now what's an area of your life right now that you wish you could change and being able to change your perspective on this from instead of feeling guilty and, and um, sad and, you know, like kind of like beating yourself up about it, it's about being able to look at it from the higher powers, from the higher perspective, even from your higher self saying to you, okay, this is the life I'm living, this is what I've been doing and this is where I come from and this is what um, has happened and has, you know, resulted in that and I have the power to to change this I have the power to try something different it could take a long time for some people to go through healing the pattern because uh, it depends on how ingrained it is within you and when we have this it's going to take some people a lot of counseling a lot of inner reflection and really getting to know yourself some people don't want to look at this at all they just cannot they cannot depending on what trauma they've gone through or what's happened in their life some people just cannot deal with it at all, but they might try and manage um, ways in how to just keep it dormant. But there are ways to heal it. Um, there's there's many healers in this on this planet, uh, spiritual healers, psychologists. Um, you know your own healing, meditation, whatever it is. There's there's so much stuff on this planet to help us break these patterns, break these cycles. And only your heart and soul will know what you can deal with and what you're guided to being doing, like what you're guided to do regarding that. If that's something you want to end, ground yourself. Yeah, a lot of you need to ground your energy. Um, and the 15 is the devil card in the tarot, which is all about um, attachments and addictions and, and, you know, things that keep us in our shadow side. And I feel like a lot of you um, or a lot of us need to really sometimes just sit down and ground, get out in nature, put your feet in the soil and really just uh, align yourself, blend in with Mother Earth, really um, go back to your ground roots here. It's about being able to replenish your energies through this. When you put your back to a tree, like Mother Nature is so naturally healing, when you put your back to a tree and you're sitting down by the tree and you're taking these beautiful deep breaths, it is amazing what you feel just for doing that. Just from doing that. So the moon cycles also being intuitive, connecting with the moon. Some of you might find yourself really, really um, connecting for some reason with the moon. You might watch the moon, but it's all about the subconscious realms, guys. And it's about mastering this. So being able to go deep within, maybe it's hypnosis or some kind of a meditation where you do go really deep into it, okay, into your subconscious. You might want to pay attention to your dreams that you're having right now. Um, this is self-mastery, okay, here. And I feel like you can trust in your intuition. Some of you are very scared to do that. It's very scary to go deep within. Um, I know some people are very scared of meditating. I used to be years ago, used to be really scared of meditating because I didn't know what I would be confronting um, and once again, it's that shadow side that we're all afraid to face. But meditation doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be facing a shadow self. It's about quietening your mind and your spirit. It's about going within and trusting in what your inner voice is telling you and mastering yourself, um, aligning yourself, grounding your energy, not being fragmented or scattered. It's bringing your energy in. And it's trusting that gut instinct, okay, over what others are telling you to do. 
or even that monkey mind, you know. Um, it's about bringing it all down into um, like that awareness. You're going to become aware. And um, that's your tapping into your true soul. You're listening to your soul. You're listening to your calling. And the new moon, if you work with the moon cycles and you want to embrace something new into your life, you do a ritual on the new moon of every month. The new moon is all about manifesting what it is that you want in your life, what you want to bring in and attract into your life. The full moon is all about releasing what it is that you um, no longer need. It's come to that full uh, culmination, I think they call it. But it's about being able to just let it go. Let it go. Know that everything that you have been uh, wanting and attracting into your life, just let it go to the universe. It'll all come in. What does Archangel Raphael have to say? Consult a nutritionist and get out and get some fresh air. So this is about you getting out in nature, maybe walking your dog. There's something that you need to do to get out and get some fresh air. Let your brain breathe, like get some oxygen into yourself, okay? Consult a nutritionist. Dear Archangel Raphael, I turn my eating over to you and ask you to guide me to foods and beverages that taste good, are fulfilling and support my ideal health and weight. You'll find that as you undergo a healing journey, uh, it is a step-by-step -step process and sometimes as you're vibrating at a higher frequency, your diet is going to change, your taste buds are going to change, there's going to be things that you don't want anymore in your life. You might find that if you have an addiction like smoking, you'll just suddenly feel like you just don't want to do it anymore. Um, it's amazing what can happen when you start to heal, you know, when you start to heal your mind, body, spirit, everything else, it's like a domino effect, it starts healing it also. And everything takes change. We can't just pray, you know, and, and wish and meditate. We can do those things, obviously, and it can bring results. But I think the universe really does respond to action. So it's okay to be in this and really set the intention and the spoken word and really bring it in, okay? Draw it in and attract it. But if you're just if you're going to be doing that, but still maintaining a same lifestyle and daily routine and the way you're thinking and everything is just the same old, same old, you're never going to see any change. You might even just want to start off with one small thing each day that you might do differently. You might wake up to a morning meditation, even if it's a five minute guided meditation to get you started for the day. That's just something that you're doing that's different and positive for your day. Some of you who drink coffee every morning and smoke like I used to do um, might decide, okay, instead of coffee, I'll have an orange juice. Like it's just a slight change, but it means a lot, okay? Wow. Okay, where's that card gone? <laughs> Far out. Okay, this is it. Mercy. I am kind and thoughtful toward myself and others. That's that criticism and compassion all in one. Okay, so we saw before the criticism um, message, I think it was. We're seeing that we're going to be having mercy on ourselves and others. Everyone's on the same page as us. Maybe a different journey, but we're all suffering. We're all going, we're all undergoing a human condition. We're all suffering in different ways, but we're still all suffering. So trust. I know that God and his infinite wisdom and love is answering my prayers right now. So being able to keep that faith that there is a higher power able to come in and really does. Um, because if your soul, if you really want this in your soul, if you want this so badly to have help, you will get it. You will get it. Absolutely. But it still takes, first of all, you wanting this. And reaching out even to heaven, even to um, Nirvana, whatever it is, Valhalla, <laughs> wherever you want to reach out your, you know, your soul to, your heart to, wherever you're divinely guided to be. Um, wow, there's so many there. Then spirit are going to hear the calling, but you first need to reach out and ask. 
Ask and you shall receive. Vision. Hold a strong vision. Okay, it says here, pay attention. There are signs, symbols and messages divinely placed in our path to guide us in the right direction. Keep your eyes, eyes um, peeled, guys. <laughs> Look out for the signs that are coming to you. Okay, we've got spirit with the eagle here. Some of you might actually find eagle feathers. Um, but the eagle represents spirit. It is the visionary. It's, it's the higher perspective coming in. So spirit is helping you to see a bigger vision here. They're giving you signs also along the way. There's a nice surprise coming in for you guys. So keep an open mind. The influence of grace is often found in unexpected places. So once again, keeping your eyes open um, that anything, anything can come in. In any way, it's answering your prayers. So you might ask for a specific thing. Uh, it could be money. It could be a, a you know, happy relationship. However you might be expecting it to come in, it might come in in another way. Okay, Archangel Gabriel, what's the message today, please? Nurture yourself. Investing time in self-care now will yield more energy for you later. And birth. New life, such as a baby, an idea, happy news, or an exciting project blossoms within and around you. I think we had something about rebirth before as well, didn't we? I can't find it now. There was something about a new life, rebirth, okay, a new life, new life birth. This is very interesting. So there's something about to be birthed into your life once you're able to keep the faith, guys, and move along this journey towards your self-healing. Um, daily practice. The more you practice your new skills, the more comfortable and confident you become. So not only are you able to say, okay, I'm going to try something new each day. It might be a routine that you get yourself into. Um, it's like with me in the mornings, I like to do my meditations when I wake up. Helps me get started for the day because I'm not a morning person at all. Um, and that's just something simple that gets my mindset positive, my body happening, you know, because it's... Um, it's like a Tai Chi thing that I like to do as well. So it's something just that's uh, implemented into my daily life right now. And I feel like there might be something that you want to do each day that might be something that you're just giving to yourself with, okay? Helping you to be a better person. Yeah, creativity. You love to devise new ideas, innovations and forms of illumination. I think I said it wasn't going to be like a real full-on reading, but it's kind of turned out to be <laughs> kind of like that. But anyway, whatever the messages are for you, you'll take. Finding a mentor, guys. This might be very, very important for some of you here. Uh, see the wisdom of the owl here, the owls. And um, I love it how they're at a cafe. Reminds me of when I was with my auntie years ago. We used to do cafe latte readings. So I know people do coffee and tea readings, but we'd actually um, order a cafe latte, you know, in those glasses and we'd drink it and then we'd read, read from the like froth <laughs> that was left on the glasses. It just reminds me of this. So funny. But you might actually meet somebody who is like a spiritual mentor for you and could be someone who's a close friend or a family member, but someone who you really look up to, someone you might want to really be like, you know, someone that's positive. And meeting angels. Look at this. And I feel like there's earth angels coming in around you right now as well. Opening your mind to that. That the people that you meet are also here to help you. As I said before, spirit ascending people in the 3D to come and help you on your journey. So the good is on... Uh, the Sorry, what am I saying? The soul is on earth for its own delight. Beautiful. So consider this amazing, amazing possibility. You incarnated on this earth just to experience the joy of being alive. Do you even know what gives you joy? Do something about that today. What makes you feel really alive, guys? We're only here for a short time. Do something that really makes you feel alive. Something you might be passionate about. It could be dancing. You know, anything. It could be anything. Do something that makes you feel really, really good.
Okay, we're up to a last card here right now. Okay, what does what do people need to know today, Spirit? Oh, wow, they want to stay out. Okay. I thought I didn't shuffle them properly, but then they flew out again. Choose love. You always have a choice as to what you should do. See how there's a gorgeous butterfly, and I just love these illustrations. Uh, her, her, whoever the artist is on this is just amazing. So we see people sitting around talking, there's gatherings, there's lovers over here, and there's people playing um, sports in the field. It's just so beautiful. So whatever you choose to do, choose love, guys. See how they're all happy and their little kids here are, is that like that game they do, ring a ring a rosy or whatever it is. Um, but there's something about this that just shows so much um, calmness in this and sharing and giving and loving and being around people that are close to you and that you do love and who are inspiring and uplifting um, instead of negative people and getting caught up in negativity. And I have to say that um, over the last two years, I don't even know why this message is coming through really, but anyway, I'll go with it. Um, over the last two years, I've really been um, drawn to not watching, you know, uh, mainstream TV or news. I just find it so negative and I find it distracting and it's just full on in your face and it's loud and it's just how I've been. I think it's because I've just become sensitive over the years to my spiritual path um, and I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I love the re reality shows. I used to always get into those things, cooking shows and all the you know reality TV, love shows, all that. I used to get right into all that stuff. Um, but for some reason, over the last two years since I had my major sh surgery, I lost my kidney um, due to a like a really big tumor. Um, I, I suddenly started to realize that I wanted to take back my energy from things that were really affecting my mind. Um, and so anything negative like uh, or shallow, superficial, I just couldn't deal with. And I thought, I can't deal with the negativity. I have to get real. I have to be real and connect with real things around me. And it's love, choosing love, things that are nourishing your soul, things that you're able to really soak yourself into that is um, beautiful and nurturing and um, helping you to be and grow into the person that you really are. And so you'll start to find that once you start choosing love, you might find that people will start to fall away from you that you no longer need in your life. They've come in for a reason and a purpose. They were part of that karmic cycle, perhaps. I've lost friends over time, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. We just tend to, um, it's like a dissolving of that uh, relationship and there's no animosity, it's just how it is. So you kind of like outgrow people and they move on to other areas. And so it can happen with love as well. And the more that you do your self-healing and your work, you'll start to meet people who are aligning with your energy and who do choose love also. So that's funny how I just had to say all that. <laughs> I don't even know why that came up about my tumor and everything. Um, but yeah, that's just interesting because I think that I think mostly what it's saying is that sometimes we can have major events happen in our life. It's like a wake up call um, and it really does make us question what's going on in our life. What, what, what do we want? Where do we want to be? Who do we want to be around? What do we want to do here? What's our purpose here? Are we going to leave this world like, you know, doing some beautiful things here while we're here? Or are we going to make our lives hell, you know, and allow others to? We have to choose love. So turn on your heart light, guys. Allow yourself in this moment to reflect on a time when you experienced love. When did you choose love last time? What was something that you did where you decided to choose love over hate or negativity? What was that? Reflect on that. And that's when you would have turned on your heart light. There would have been a time where something might have tested your patience or really made you so afraid, um, but you know you chose love. And so it's just reminding you that you can keep doing that. Okay, and so that's when, when we do this, it's like our pain dissipates, our sadness dissipates. We're true to ourselves and we do heal. We really do heal. We come out like that butterfly here through the transition. And yes, it's painful. The journey is painful. But it doesn't always have to be painful. It can be rewarding. 
can be rewarding as well. And I think, I don't know if Spirit wants me to do anything else. Is there anything else, Spirit, that I need to pick out? Oh, okay, hang on. There's a deck of cards that are drawing me to right here, which is interesting because this is my own deck, Divine Oracle, the, the Divine Oracle. What do we need to know? What's, an, what's another message that we could use today? I'm going to pick out two, am I? Two? All right, two. Or maybe they're going to let them come out. There it is, heart chakra air. When you show yourself compassion, you are able to connect with others with an open heart. You can turn that heart light on and choose love from your heart chakra. And embrace your inner child because that's where you need to give that's what you need to give love to guys so I really hope this has been some help to you today giving you some help in some way comfort um, or clarity I hope there's some messages that you've been able to take from this um, this is the first time I've done this kind of uh, reading I was just guided to do this strongly today for anyone that's undergoing some kind of pain this has also helped me guys so it's not like I'm just, you know, a guru type thing coming in and telling you all this. I also am benefiting from these messages as well, guys. I'm on this journey with you as well. Um, so guys, I look forward to connecting with you next time. I love you all. Love and blessings.